you want to be left alone? Yes. Yes. Come with me on my journey to eating spaghetti. Excuse me, aren't you William Shatner? <laughs> Get away from me! So that would be a bad time. Yes, <laughs> but actually there's no good time. Can I say, 84 years old. I am. And you are busier, I mean, so, so first of all, if I can do one buttery up thing, that's all you're gonna get. Uh, you've reinvented yourself over and over and over. Not just Star Trek, no, Star Trek, Star Trek. That's the but... strangest phrase from you. Reinvent, well you don't reinvent. You are who you are, but... from probably from birth, <laughs> but certainly by three or four, you are who you are. And, you're, and you don't reinvent, you just, something else comes along. Like, like, you're not driving a new car if you go up a strange street. You're just going up a, a street that nobody else knew was there. But how many people in this town would kill to have been relevant in every single decade of his life and to every single age of the, I mean, there are six-year-olds who come up to you, there are 80-year-olds who come up to you. I don't talk to 80-year-olds. <laughs> They're too old. They're blithering and dripping saliva Excuse down the side. Me. They got dirt on the front of their shirt. But the point is you're, you're completely swamped. You're swamped? I'm completely swamped. All the time. I came, I, I just, as we, you and I speak, uh, t uh, three days ago, I flew in from Dubai. Then I came back and I had to jump into three projects, or more really, that I'm doing. One of them, for example, is there's a uh, children's series in England called The Clangers. So I'm the voice of Clanger, so I had to go do a Clanger session hours after I got back. Oh. Okay. Then I did, just now, uh, this morning, I did promotion for the Clangers. So now there's going to be two-year-olds who recognize you on the street? Yeah. So I sort of <laughs> thought of that. Wouldn't it be something to have the 80-year-old come and say, hey, you remember me? We were two-year-olds together. You know, and, and say, no, I have, I have nothing to do. You're over 80. I have nothing to do with you. And, and then have a two-year-old say, there's Clanger. <laughs> It's gonna happen. Is that wild? <laughs> it is wild. Because it's the same voice. The 80-year-old and the two-year-old, because as you know, as Shakespeare told us, we, the seven ages of man, you become the child and then you revert back to the child. So maybe the 80-year-old will join in on the on the joy of clangers. <laughs> yeah, a second audience. You're right. Um, so people must come up to you all the time. And, you know, I loved you in this, I loved you in that. Um, give us a Yeah, uh, uh, people in stores. Loved you in that store when you were <laughs> buying groceries. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, but we don't know how you like to be approached or when you like to be interrupted. Uh, give us a lesson in what's the right way to do it. Do you want to be left alone? Yes. Yes. Come with me on my journey to eating spaghetti. <laughs> All right? You're looking, you're sitting at another table. Yeah. It's one of these French restaurants, yeah. okay? And we're sitting side by side. My wife is here, and are you married? Yeah. So then you're with your girlfriend. Okay. Okay, over <laughs> And I'm, <coughs> and I want you to say, excuse me, aren't you William Shatner? Excuse me, aren't you William Shatner? <laughs> Get away from me. So that would be a bad time to yes. hear but actually, there's no good time. Really? Yeah. So you'd rather people just... I, I would, but I understand the impulse, and I say thank you very much. But you could be rushing to catch an airplane, as it happened so many times. People say, okay, can I have a picture? No. Right, right, right. So I wrote a novel. Somebody helped me write the novel, uh, but a lot of it was, was me. The core of the idea is the young people, the 18-year-olds, the 20-year-olds, want rebellion. They want Mars to be alone, not a colony of Earth. Mm -hmm. And so I repeat the American Revolution oh. on Mars. Yeah. Okay. So that's the conceit of, of uh, Man of War. We have drawn an illustrated novel of Man of War. So, so you read the ebook and you come to 
a flying ship. And the hero gets on the flying ship. You press the e-book and the illustration of the ship he gets on comes up. Oh. In reverse, you press the ship that he's going to get it go in, in the illustrated novel, and the paragraph from the text from the text comes up. Oh wow! Is that? But okay, but you're this is what I don't understand. You're you're doing this cutting edge multimedia stuff. You are on Kickstarter. You've had YouTube series. You've you're on Twitter. Thirty thousand. That was the other thing I did yesterday. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> Brownbagwinetasting.com. Oh, brown bag wine tasting on aura.tv. Okay? I do an interview show. You, you can just Google Shatner wine and you'll find it. Brown bag of wine. Two glasses. Hello, how are you? Tell me about yourself. Let's drink. What do you think of the drink? But tell me about yourself. Right. So, some of the people think it's a wine show. I think it's an interview show. Oh, for sure. It's okay. an interview show. Yeah. I just did eight interviews yesterday. Eight people. Wow. So that's what I was doing in these last three days. This day ends with my interview with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm so jet lagged. <laughs> I'm wondering whether I've got the usual governor. <laughs> no, no. Uh, don't Actually, you're doing uh, eliminate great. The you're, governor. You're, even when you're jet lagged, you're a fascinating interview. Um, well, if you don't mind, I have some uh, tweets that people said. I don't mind, but I also want to tell you, in, in, in uh, relationship to the question of being how old are you and all that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm also invent, uh, part of a design of a motorcycle. American Wrench in Chicago is a hundred year old motorcycle f uh, firm. Mm -hmm. Along terms, uh, designs that I had a big hand in, like who writes the book, who designed the motorcycle, yeah. okay? I had a big hand in it. That bike will be ready, and on June shortly, and on June twenty-first, I'm going to drive that bike along with a, a load of other people. I hope from Chicago to L.A. Wow! And, and if I may ask, what do you know about motorcycle design? Oh, uh, what do I know about? Motorcycle? Yeah, I drive motorcycles a lot. I used uh -huh. to race in the desert. Oh wow! Yeah, so I laid a bike down inadvertently. Okay, I was driving along very nicely on a dirt road, dirt, made it, and the bike slid across the macadam. I slid on my back, left m most of my skin on my back and my rear end on the road, Ooh. and got back up on the bike, and I was about 50 miles from L.A., and I'm driving along the freeway, now trying to get back. Blood is coming down, and people are driving up. Oh, my God, I think that's Shatner. <laughs> it was hysterical. I obviously recovered, and the bike is fine and I'm good. But policemen aren't allowed to pick up their Harley Davidsons because they're too heavy. Do you know that? No. Yeah, they're not allowed. If, if, if a motorcycle cop did that, he'd have to wait for uh, help to come pick up the bike. Wow. So stability became suddenly a priority. So the first thing I said to the designers was, I want three wheels, and the two wheels in back, one wheel in front, a trike. Wow. So that's the first part of it. That's what I know about designing a bike, okay? <laughs> That's pretty... I want protection from the elements. Yeah. Oh. Okay? Not just a windshield, but I want the windshield to be able to disappear as well, so I'm open. But should it rain on my way across the Rockies, I want protection. It has to be written for two people. It has to be powerful. We're going to have an extraordinary engine in this incredible bike. RivetMotors.com. And so it's got all that? It's, it's got the enclosure and... You go to Rivet... Uh, look <laughs> okay. it up right now. All right. Stop the interview. Go to RivetMotors.com. <laughs> all right. Check it out. There it is. Oh. That's, a, that's a sketch of it, but that's what it's going to look like. <laughs> it's like. It's like the bat cycle. <laughs> oh, man. And you, you lie down on it or no, you no, sit you up sit, on you it? No, no. You sit there. Wow. Uh, in the seat. But it's all advanced circuitry and... Technology and everything. Else. That is crazy. All right, so you, you didn't answer that one thing. How do you do this? Everyone would love to still be creative and relevant when they're 84. Well, that, see, that's the gift. I have been gifted by this celebrity with the ability to do that. Kevin Krajacek sought me out, said, We'd like to make a motorcycle for you. I said, Great. Two weeks later, 
a friend of mine who's a sculptor said, I've got an idea, yeah, and I commissioned certain works from this guy, uh -huh. and we'd become friendly, so I'd like to make a motorcycle that would fit into the Museum of Modern Art. I said, this can't be a coincidence. I got everybody together. The sculptor eventually dropped out, uh -huh. and Kevin and I remained in the project. But you're, but you're also still acting, though. I mean, wasn't, uh, Bleep, got, Bleep My Dad says, wasn't that your first sitcom? Yeah. I mean, but, uh, and there's uh, things coming up. <coughs> Excuse me. Dubai sand. <coughs> I was going to say a little uh, desert sand here. Yeah. Uh, there are things coming up uh, this uh, fall that I can't talk about that uh, it'll be interesting to watch. More TV stuff? More TV stuff. Wow. And do you plan never to retire? So what do you retire to? Um, this weekend, that, that you and I are speaking, I'm going down to a coast city, uh, Del Mar, here in California, and I will compete on horseback against, uh, a few weeks ago it was against a hundred other contestants. You go in one by one, it's called a, a reining, it's a, it's a, a very uh, athletic uh, equine skill, <laughs> and I've spent years trying to get good at it, <laughs> and I won two, three weeks ago, I won nine blue ribbons. Seven or nine. It was either seven or nine. Next time we talk, it might be 11. So, so you're not just dabbling in horse, horses, no, no, you're no, no, actually no. good at it. I'm really good at yeah. it. Yeah. I'm really good at it, and I have a lot of horses and, and uh, here and in Kentucky. And... Um, I'm very serious about it. And, well, and clearly passionate they, about there it. are actual, actual action figures well, of your horse. This horse, All Glory, was one of the great horses that ever lived. This is a 12 time world champion. Wow. I drove him to world championships, and Liz rode him to world championships. And, and Briarfest rarely does this. So, this is a, a very unusual um, honor. So you've, you've lived from the time of being a celebrity to the time of being a celebrity on An Facebook old celebrity, and Twitter. Right? <laughs> well, no, because, I mean, the, so, so how, how has celebrity changed in the era of Twitter? I mean, now it's not just getting a bad review. You know, now I, it's people I, piling on. I've come to recently, this is a new thought for me. Uh, I, I haven't seen it anywhere, but I, maybe you, you'll recognize it. Cause, but I haven't seen it, and I, I I'm, uh, try to keep as current as possible in the news. What's happened with the phone and the iPhone, particularly because it's most of the news, but all those other guys, that picture-taking ability has changed the world, both good and bad. Mm -hmm. Good, look at what's happening to inequality, incidences of dramatic inequality, whether it's with the police or or, or uh, 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 meetings or what have you in society, people are taking pictures and it's up there mm -hmm. to be seen and sometimes frequently utilized by the, by the general news uh, so it gets a large display. Both the good like racial inequality and the bad where a passionate teenager sends naked photographs of herself and ruins her reputation and ruins her life because she's not thinking. And the reason she's not thinking is because her dendrites haven't made the connection mm -hmm. yet because she's an adolescent. Mm -hmm. She's incapable of thinking of consequences. So that camera has changed society completely. I sat at a table with three young men. One was 16, 14, and 12, and their father. There were tens of thousands of people there, and nines of those thousands of people, uh, so if there were 50,000 people there, 49,000 people were after those kids. Why? Because they made six-second videos called Vines. Had you ever heard the term? I have, but... Have funny. you ever seen them? Sure. So, I mean, it's almost like, count this out. Hey, man, how are you? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty,
three, four, five, six. Right. That's it. Right. That's that's what they do, and the, and they were more popular than any of the leading actors of the thing. Well, anybody there? Yeah. Yeah. That it's changed the world. On on that small way, on the large way, and the revolutions all over the world that are taking place in front of us. History no longer has to be written in the word. History is being made on pictures so that from now on, all the ages, you can't burn those books because that's too mm. preeminent. History has gone to someplace else that remains to be seen where, mm. but in its, but in its uh, uh, invasion of, of privacy and society, in its latitude, in freedom of the press, and so many other levels of understanding of what's happened, so that these kids, for six seconds of how are you, man, are had forty nine thousand people, and the rest of us had that that one other person saying, "Hey, well, I wonder, maybe I should go over to the vines guy." Yeah. Well, are you of the opinion then that we should be careful with all the new mobile screens? Well, careful, what does that mean? I mean, All I know is somebody said to me in Dubai, all, the young, all that the young people want to do be nowadays is a celebrity. They don't want to work for it. Hmm. They don't want to put in the apprenticeship, whether that's at college or, or training schools and things like that. They want to be in a, a celebrity. Don't have to work, get all those fancy cars, drive off into the sunset. But in terms of your grandchildren, for example, um, we hear, oh man, people, the kids have their faces in screens, they're losing the ability to create personal connections. Do you worry about uh, well, that stuff? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we have to tell our grandkids, put the phone down and talk to me. Mm. And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So what is it, Papa, was it? Oh, just a, put the phone down. <laughs> Yeah. How is your, um, do you have a thick skin when it comes to like the online stuff that people? I don't read it. Oh, you don't? No, no. But you're on Twitter all the I time. I know, but I don't read the nasty stuff gotcha. because what's released by being anonymous is all the vapors, the ugly vapors that are being breathed in and out by a, a personality who feels liberated to say anything in any language they they like about somebody they envy or don't like or maybe love and express their love in, in a variety of ways. It's a sickness. It's a hole in somebody's personality that's filled to use the language, the gutter language, and the thought. You know, I I didn't read very much of it, maybe. Um, a friend of mine, Leonard Nimoy, died. And I've known him since the beginning of Star Trek, 50 years. 50, a friendship was 50 years old. So I, it was something I treasured. Marvelous guy. Obviously, I didn't know he was going to die, so prior to that, many months prior, I said yes to go to a, um, a uh, Red Cross convention uh, fundraiser across the country in Miami so that's 3,000 miles away to which a thousand people were paying a lot of money a fundraiser for the Red Cross so Leonard's funeral fell on the same day that I was supposed to be in Miami I chose to raise funds for needy people because for me in my mind I will always remember the dead, my dead friend. I will never forget my dead friend. But this was a way of honoring the living. So at the dinner, I said, can we pay tribute to Leonard at the dinner? So I was able to memorialize him and raise several, help raise several million dollars for people around the world who needed help from the Red Cross. So I was castigated, apparently, quite severely. I don't understand it. I mean, to me, there's no choice. Why would you 
because you make an appearance at a funeral doesn't mean you don't remember, love, honor uh, any more or less if you don't go to the funeral. It's the grief inside you that, I mean, I, I don't quite understand the need to, to show your, your grief publicly when you can grieve, when you would grieve privately. You'd be hiding your grief, in fact. You'd be sunglass and hat down and mm -hmm. collar up to, to, to keep away from people prying into it. Right. So the ugly thoughts that were said uh, on Twitter was part of what we talked about earlier. And had you abandoned the Red Cross event to go to the funeral, what would Twitter have said then? Right. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't win either way. No, so you got to follow your own you know, drummer. You know, you, that's a mixed metaphor, but that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of Twitter, uh, these are some questions people have submitted in uh, eagerness um, for my being able to ask you a couple questions. Uh, one of them says, um, well, happy birthday, 84. Um, okay, so uh, B.D. Jones asks, please ask him about his brief singing career, which was actually four albums, right? It wasn't that brief. No, it's not brief at all. I did do a show with only briefs on. <laughs> I don't think that's what they're that's asking. That's what they meant. <laughs> uh, I love, I love s opera. I love singers. I love uh, music, and I just uh, I I studied for a while, and I should be able to sing. I know all about voice production. I understand, you know, and, and I my speaking voice has been trained and all that mm. kind of thing. I did I did all that stuff when I was younger, but I never. I, I'd like to just say I never followed it through enough so that I could sing. Mm -hmm. But what I have an ear for is poetry mm -hmm. and the rhythm and the, the uh, onomatopoeia of, of the English language. So that's, that's been a lifelong passion, the poetry, the Eng English poetry. Mm. Uh, and, and, and I can do that to a song. If the lyric is good and the melody comes along, I'm able to bring out the poetry of the lyric accompanied by the music. So I kind of evolved that style to the point where I wrote songs for both uh, uh, Ben Folds, uh, who we did an album called Has Been, and another album with uh, Billy Sherwood, who was uh, one of the leading members of Yes, I wrote an album called Ponder the Mystery with Billy Sherwood. I wrote all the lyrics of uh, that one, and he wrote the uh, melody. And um, your, your entanglement with poetry began, in fact, with your first work when you were a Shakespearean actor, right? Yeah. Stratford? Right. Um, and you're still doing Shakespeare, right? Yeah, there's, there's a Shakespeare thing that goes on in Los Angeles every year, uh, to which we get up and, and read a play, essentially read a play. <laughs> Uh, with Tom Hanks and his wife, and, <clears throat> and I'm sort of a member of that <laughs> illustrative company. And I've had great experiences, comic and, and wonderful times on stage with these wonderful performers. Well, speaking of which, Doobie Doo 2 wants to know, will you ever do your one-man show again? I opened on Broadway with a one-man show, uh, played to wonderful audiences, toured 40 cities, um, then I did lesser cities, lesser populated cities, uh, 10, 15 of those. I'm going to do a tour uh, in Australia in the fall, uh, and they're booking me in certain colleges uh, in the winter as well of my one-man show, uh, which is called Shatner's World. You understand, don't you, why people hear this and say, that is a lot of stuff. You, you have your fingers in so many different pots. Yes, but the time that where I really devote myself, I try to, is family and dogs, hmm. Dobermans and, and wife and grandchildren and children and, and uh, the whole encompassing family thing. But have you ever, has it ever crossed your philosophical mind 
if I buy all these lottery tickets to different projects, I'll increase my chances that some of them will become huge. The next Star Trek or The Practice or Boston Legal, you know what I mean? Like, what do you mean would my time then be occupied? I'm being very careful about that, about going into something that would take me uh, for the first time, I think somebody said, uh, you're 84. Okay, what if this is a, runs 10 years? <laughs> that's, yeah, well, that's nice. Yeah, right. I expect to be writing when I'm 94. <laughs> What's wrong with saying some words? You know, <laughs> how, how difficult could that be? Staying on a horse is difficult. Comedy, you think comedy is tough. Riding a horse as a rainer. Right behind you is a picture of, uh, of me in that wooden frame. This guy? Yeah. Sliding to, to a stop. Wow. That's, uh, that's raining. Now, <laughs> theoretically, this horse slides to a stop. You do a 180 right over his hindquarters, a rollback. Go to the far end, slide to another stop. Any one of a number of plat patterns, but a lot of sliding stops, a lot of turns, a lot of fast circles, slow circles. Anyway, that's a picture. That, and and do, do the, the public who are there, do they know it's you, or do they just say, wow, that guy's pretty good? Um, I think, I'd like to think that they say, wow, that guy's pretty good. It must be Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's just what they're saying. Oops, sorry, I just, sorry, I just broke your picture. broke my picture. Sorry. <laughs> and the last thing is from Rough Acres. Just Rough Acres, he back in town? Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, do you, you know, do you know his brother, Solid Hectares? <laughs> That's good, man. You can improvise that. Uh, <laughs> Rough Acres says, just tell I, him. I, 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 wanna, I, I don't want to reveal too much, but this whole conversation has been improvisational. <laughs> Wait, you didn't get the script? I sent it to you. There you are. <laughs> it's on teleprompter. <laughs> That's right. Uh, anyway. Just tell him his constant reinvention is thrilling, all caps. Fantastic. And we all agree with that. It's, oh, that's wild. It's amazing yeah. because what actor who had a series doesn't wish that he's had five that all caught fire? Yeah. It, it costs a lot in terms of social sacrifice. How do you mean? Well, relationships can oh. go up in flames because of the amount of time devoted. So, there, there's a guy, I interviewed a guy yesterday, <laughs> come to think of it, <laughs> um, who came up through the projects, football player, made it big, earned lots of money, bought a Ferrari, loved his Ferrari, met a girl, and he was hot with the women, and the Ferrari and the diamond watch and all ensured the fact that there would be a constant supply of passionate, beautiful women <laughs> angling for him or his watch. He never could <laughs> quite tell. Met the girl of his dreams. And driving her around in the Ferrari, she didn't quite like it a lot, but it was okay. She goes into a grocery store to get something. He's staying in the Ferrari. While he's in the Ferrari, three beautiful women see him and start to come over because this guy is in a Ferrari. And he realizes this beloved car he's got to give up in order to be with the woman he loves. It's like an O. Henry story. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That is. So you, should, you should write it. It's your next, your next novel. Well, it's, it's on, on film. So that was apropos That's of, part of the wine series? That, yes. Yeah. That, that was apropos of... Being successful and having some money brings a whole host of other problems mm. that people who can't pay their rent would like to have. But when you think about it, as I queried this gentleman the other day, did you lose a lot of your old friends? Because they would, not having any money, they, they would hit them up for, mm -hmm. can you let me have a thousand? Mm -hmm. And when you're a creditor, the debtor hates you because you're the creditor. Mm -hmm. You resent the debtor because now he owes you money and he's not going to pay it back. Mm -hmm. And the equal relationship suddenly changes because you got the money right. and they don't. So all your relationships go through a change.
Well, it's the story of the lottery winner, too, you know? A Absolutely. lot of their lives fall apart when That's they... That's right. Um, all right, so the very last thing is, what does drive you? It's, you're not doing all this for the money anymore, right? It's not for fame. What... Sh chauffeur. <laughs> I thought it was simple. <laughs> what drives me? I have the opportunity. I have the guy. I... Dubai, man. Dubai is... Dubai is a fairyland. I mean, it's got all its problems, not the least of which is 40 miles across the water there is Iran, yeah. and, and uh, a couple hundred miles down the other way, the, there's uh, a rebellion going on. And, so it's in the Middle East, but it's Disneyland. Don't you want to go see it? I had the opportunity. I have the opportunity to do the bike. I have the opportunity to write a book. I have the opportunity. I'm given these opportunities. And I'm thinking, why? I gotta do it. I can make a little time here and I'll be okay. And then I spend a little more time. But I'm able to kind of dance back and do something else. You don't want to just rest on your laurels and your feet. Laurels, I have a prickly leaf. You rest on those laurels and you're, and you're, God. I haven't it's tried It's like it the pee in the mattress. Yeah, right? that's right. It's gotta be a drag. Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing it not just with us, but with all these other projects and enterprises you're involved with. It's, it's really inspiring. Good. Thanks, I want, Dan. I want you to do more. <laughs>